Do you have bursitis on your knee? Your knee joint is surrounded by four synovial fluid sacs called bursa. The one right on the top here is called your prepatellar bursa. The one on the side here, a little bit down below, is called your pes anserine bursa. These are the most common sources for bursitis, where you'll get inflammation and pain. And then there are two more bursa up here, your suprapatellar bursa, and then down here, your infrapatellar bursa. But these two, are the ones that cause the most problems. Unfortunately, I've had injuries in both of these areas. I've learned a lot along my healing journey that I'd like to share with you today. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher and trainer. My first bursitis was caused through an impact injury. I fell off a bike going really slowly, didn't think anything of it, but lo and behold, I ended up with chronic bursitis. This year, unfortunately, I've had that pes anserine bursitis on the inside of both of my knees, and that's been a real, real challenge to deal with. Here's what I've learned along the journey. Number one, doing nothing doesn't help at all. You need to stay active. Movement is really crucial for circulation and for reducing inflammation. Number two, cortisone shots absolutely work. They will make the pain go away, but they don't solve the problem. And number three, surgery is really a last ditch effort. At one point I was even signed up for a surgery. Luckily, touch wood, I was able to avoid that. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about a protocol that you can potentially use with your bursa, but I'd like to put a big asterisk, which is this is a really, really troubling injury. What I mean by that is I've talked to multiple doctors and literally over a hundred students who are dealing with it, and there is no one size fits all answer. There is no universal. It's really a guessing game, but you really have to do self experimentation. And there are some rules of thumb that can be helpful. Here's my story. When I came off the bike and I banged my knee, my first bursitis was asymptomatic in terms of pain. It was really, really squishy. It looked like a jelly donut on the top of my knee for the better part of four years. I tried doing nothing. That made it worse. I tried doing a lot. That also made it worse. Somewhere in between, and this anecdotally has been really true for a lot of my students, is usually where people find the sweet spot. That means if you're used to running five kilometers a day, maybe you back off to walking three kilometers a day. That means if you're used to doing heavy weight training, maybe you move back to calisthenics or body weight. That means if you're used to working on your knees, painting, carpentry, or something where you're doing trades work, maybe you use extra padding or try to stay off your knees in the short term. Very much the symptomology will give you clues if it's working. When things get worse, it's getting worse. When things improve, it gets better. That sounds really obvious, but sometimes we think it needs to get worse to get better. My experience with bursitis now in both my knees is that it needs to get better to get better, but it can be a really long journey. I went to a doctor multiple times, and at one point he actually drained my bursa with a syringe. Believe it or not, I was actually scheduled for a surgery, which fortunately I was able to avoid. The outcomes of surgery for bursitis, from my understanding, are really not that great. So if you can manage it naturally, that's the way to go. We already talked about reducing the intensity of impact or weightlifting or running. I'd like you also to consider working in a much less range of motion. So if your full range of motion in a squat, for example, is bum all the way to heels, I'd encourage you to continue to squat, but instead of working in that max range of motion, maybe you squat just past 90 degrees. Work, keep moving, keep active, but less. Think of five of 10 intensity, think of moderate rather than intense exercise, but don't sit around and do nothing. That tends to have inflammation accumulate. The next thing I'd like to introduce you is the one thing that's really made a huge difference for me. You might have seen the knees over toes guy on the internet. His name is Ben Patrick and he does a lot of backwards walking. I don't know Ben personally and I don't know his program so well, but just this idea of walking backwards was something I started experimenting with for bursitis. I know Ben does a lot of work with tendonitis and ACL reconstruction and much more serious knee injuries, but I thought, why not give it a try? And it made a big difference. What I found is walking backwards, sidewalking, and potentially doing a little bit of dynamic twisting, which I'll show you here in a moment, really helped to stress my knees, not just in the sagittal plane. If you think about the way we move in our modern lifestyles, it's very, very linear, meaning my knees come up, my knees go down, I sit on the toilet, I sit in the car, I sit in a chair. There's not a lot of dynamism for movement for most people, non-athletes like myself. By dynamism, I mean sidestepping. By dynamism, I mean pivoting. By dynamism, I mean walking backwards. I don't really do any of those things in my daily activity, which means my knees are really prone to repetitive stress. Yours probably are as well. When you think about soft tissue injuries of your knee, one analogy that people use is to work on the donut, not the hole. And if the hole is the injury, working on the donut means strengthening and lengthening the tissues that surround the injury, rather than trying to grind into that same injury, expecting a different result. 
For me, what that meant is three days a week, so roughly every other day, I do 100 steps walking backwards, 100 steps walking to my left side, side stepping, and 100 steps walking to my right side, and then I'll even play around with just a little bit of twisting side to side to again work not just in my sagittal plane, but also in the coronal plane, and even a little bit in my transverse plane to attempt to reestablish the donut strength around the whole that injury and it's made a big difference. What does that mean for me? That means I can run about 30 or 40 kilometers per week. I've completed two marathons in the past year and I'm mostly pain-free. I still seem like I'm prone to little inflammation flare-ups here and there, but I'm hopeful within the next few months this will be something that I can put behind me. I hope you can too. I'd like to share with you a really simple exercise routine. I like to do it on a treadmill. I just find it a lot easier to control, but you could certainly do it outdoors as well. It's backward walking, side walking, and a little bit of transverse plane twisting. Let me show you how it works. So at the gym, grab any treadmill, any brand, any make, a new one, old one, doesn't matter at all. And our goal first is to get just a little bit of incline. So I'll start my treadmill and I'll put my incline at about 3%. So it gives me a little bit of resistance, just a little bit of uphill. The next thing is the speed. You'll be tempted to go fast, don't do it. I like to start off very, very slowly, like three kilometers per hour. It's essentially like a slow walking pace, which seems too slow until you flip around and go backwards. Now remember, this is my normal walking, jogging, running gait, which means I'm working in the sagittal plane. Our goal is to switch that up, work in the coronal plane, even a little bit as I'm moving in the transverse plane. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm switching backwards here. And now I'm up on my toes. I'm not making any contact with my heels. So I stress the connective tissues and the muscles and potentially even that bursa in a slightly different way. And again, this concept of working on the donut, not the hole, comes into play. I'd like you to count to 100. So we do 100 steps. It takes roughly a minute. And then we'll switch to side stepping, which looks like this, or side skipping, where you're up on the balls of your feet side stepping if you'd like to take it easy or side skipping like this and again 100 steps takes roughly a minute and then we'll pivot around and do the other side if you'd like to and you want to add in more work in the transverse plane you'd simply do some movements twisting around so starting from the front going to the back twisting back to the front and then reversing direction it sounds really simple, but again, your knees so rarely get worked in those different ranges. It can make a really big difference. I hope you found this video helpful. To support the channel, hit subscribe down below. It just takes a moment and it really helps me out. You'll find a PDF reference guide for all the exercises we covered down below in the description. And lastly, please remember bursitis is a very, very mysterious injury. If what I shared with you here is not working, please trust your instinct. And if in doubt, please go see a doctor. This is a troubling, tricky injury, but there's a really good prognosis long-term that you can find success. Thanks so much for joining me. If you'd like to train with me, I have a daily program called Yoga Body Daily, and you'll find that at yogabody.com. We'll see you in the next video.